And then, uh, then the last thing we want to do is go to the um, go to the no encroach check, and we want to uncheck it. Uh, that's actually not that important right now, but it will set us up for later on when we want the Plinko balls to actually be able to uh, set off triggers themselves. So the next thing that we're going to do is set up our spawn points. We'll do that by going back into the perspective, uh, perspective viewport. And uh, just like the triggers, we actually already have our spawn points set up. Uh, they're just a bunch of path nodes. And uh, I'll show you how to create uh, one of them. Uh, you want to right click on the wall and go to add actor and add path node and that creates a path node. But as you can see, it puts a path node like right on the wall. So you might want to pull it off of the wall just a little bit. And once you have uh, multiple spawn points, you want to space them out uh, so that way they're not just creating um, Plinko balls on top of each other. So we created four of them. Now let's go back in the, uh, the Kismet editor. Uh, have to maximize it again. Okay, and uh, we want to go to our actor factory, open up the factory properties, and uh, look for spawn point, which is right here. We want to select the area next to it, and you want to click on the add new item button uh, once for each spawn point that you have. So we have four, so I'm going to click this four times in order to create a slot for all four spawn points. And then I want to go back into the uh, back into the perspective viewport and select the first spawn point. Open this up again. Open up the Kismet editor, uh, and I want to go to the first spawn point and. Uh, click the green arrow, and that sets up the first spawn point to be the first path node. And I want to do that for each of the spawn points, so I'm going to select the second one, and go ahead and use that. Select the third one, and I'm going to grab my last one, and use that. All right. And now our actor factory is pretty much complete. All we have to do is link it to the trigger used uh, event. So I'm going to select the used connection and drag it over to the spawn actor connection on the actor factory. Now if we, uh, now we can actually test it out so we can build our level and go ahead and ignore those errors and we'll go ahead and play it. So now if we go up to our trigger and we press the use button, you can see that we just spawned, uh, spawned a Plinko ball. So we can create a few of them. All right, so now we know it works. So the next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna set up our, inner, we're gonna set up an integer counter. Um, so it's actually gonna go in between the trigger used event and the actor factory. So we actually have to, uh, break this link first. You can do that again by right clicking on the connection and go to break link to and then select the actor factory and that just broke the link. And now we're going to move the actor factory over so we can put the integer uh, the integer counter in between them. Uh, right click, go to new condition, counter, int counter. And there we have it. Now the next thing, then we want to uh, set up two variables that it's going to use. So we right click, go to new variable, int, int. I'm going to do that again to create another variable. All right. Now this first variable is going to be our, uh, this first variable is going to be our actual counter. And it's going to start at zero and count up each time that we create a Plinko ball. All right, so it actually starts with a value of zero, so we don't have to adjust it. We can just connect it to uh, the A connection of the encounter. And you actually have to do that by dragging from the, 
connection itself. You can't drag from the um, the variable. So the ne the uh, the other variable is going to be what we're going to compare to. And since we're counting up to ten, we want to give it a value of ten. So go to the int uh, int value property and put in ten. Then uh, then go ahead and link it to the B connection. And then we want to go to the used connection of the trigger used event and connect it to the in connection of the int counter. So that way each time we use uh, the trigger it's going to count, uh, it's going to add one to the counter. And then we want to go to the A is less than or equal to B connection and connect it to the spawn actor connection of the actor factory. So that way it will only create uh, Plinko balls when A, or our counter, is less than or equal to B, which is 10. So we can go ahead and try this out. I'm going to close the Kismet editor, build all, and open up the game. And I'm going to create 10 Plinko balls. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So there's 10 of them. And then I'm going to uh, press it one more time. But as you can see, it did not create any more Plinko balls. So we know that works. All right, the next thing that we're going to do is set up uh, our int counter uh, to be reset once it reaches 11. So let's go into our Kismet editor. And uh, I'm going to move my actor factory. Uh, up a little bit, and then I'm going to right click and go to action, new action, uh, math, and uh, subtract int. So that created our subtract int uh, action, and I want to create another integer variable, so I'm going to go to new variable, int, int. Now, since, we're since we want to uh, have our counter reset to 0 once it reaches 11, we're going to give this variable a value of 11. So let's go to int value and enter in 11. And now let's link this up. So we do that by taking our, our counter, which is uh, this variable that starts on 0, and we want to uh, link it up to the A connection of the subtract int uh, action. And then we want to uh, link the B connection to uh, the integer that has uh, a value of 11. So what that's going to do is it's going to take our counter and subtract 11 from it. And then we want to take the int result connection and link it back to our counter. What that's going to do is it's going to give us, it's going to take the result of uh, subtracting 11 from our counter, and it's going to store that result in the counter itself, and thus reset it back to 0. And then, to, uh, to, uh, to set all of this up, we want to go to the A is greater than B connection of the int counter, and link it to the in connection of the subtract int so the next thing that we're going to do is set up a log action, so that way we can log a message to the screen that lets us know when we've reset the counter. So I'm going to start by moving the, uh, the subtract int down a little bit, so that way we have room. And I'm going to create the log by going to new action, miscellaneous, log. And now we need to also create a string variable that has the message that we're actually going to log. And I can do that by going to new variable, string. Then I want to go to the string's properties and give it a string value of reset. I'm going to do that in all caps. 